Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we're going to explain how to install LDAP-S or secure LDAP. In case you're not familiar with what LDAP is, it stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And really what it's doing in a Windows network is allowing things that are not in Active Directory to talk to Active Directory and take out usernames, passwords, credentials, things like that. Uh, let's get to it. I'll explain the uh, setup we have first uh, uh, because, you know, I've seen a bunch of videos where people have these labs with one computer in them and not very useful because there's more to it than that. So I'm going to show you what would actually exist in a, probably in your network. What I've got here is you can see that these are labeled. So this is a DC2. You can ignore the DC number, but uh, anyway, it's server 2022 and I've got a DC8 here, sorry, 2019. And I have a member server, which is running server 22 and I have Windows 11 box. So I've got the uh, domain already set up. I've got two domain controllers and I've got a member server and I've got a PC. Right, so pretty straightforward. Now the nut of LDAP S or secure LDAP is that you really have to install a, C a certificate authority, which is something that is, well, it's something I've always avoided in the past. You can get around it by using an external certificate, but it's much easier to use a certificate authority and it's not near as big a deal as you think it is. And once that certificate authority is installed, you're pretty much done. So the first question you're gonna have is, well, where do I install it? Do I install it on a member server? Do I install it on a DC? What do I do? Well, it can go on a DC, on a domain controller if you want, but it should not go on a domain controller with all of the FISMOs. And I can't recall why, but it shouldn't. Now, that being said, I have done this many times where I've installed it on the domain controller with the FISMOs, and it seems to work just fine. So a security expert will chime in, I'm sure, and explain in the comments below why you shouldn't put it on uh, one with the FISMOs. In my case, the FISMOs, the Flexible Service Masters, are all on the server 2022. That's the one that I built initially. And just to show you that, there's a command line to bring it up, but it's so much easier just to go into your Active Directory users and computers, right click and select all tasks, operations masters, and you'll see where most of them are. So you can see here, the PDC, the infrastructure, RID, you know, all of those things, they're on here. Just So that's all background. So now we've got the choice to install it on the domain controller or member server. We're going to install this on the domain controller that doesn't have the FISMOs, which is this DC8. And let's maximize that so you can see what we're doing. And all we want to do is go to server manager and add that role. So this takes a second. All right, so click manage in the top right hand corner, add roles and next. And yes, it's role based. And Yes, it's on this server. And right there, Active Directory Certificate Services. Hee haw. Click on that. Click Add Features. And Next. And Next. And yes, by the way, this is all next. Now, here, there are some choices. Uh, the certificate Authority is the one you want. That's what we're going to need for the purpose of this course. That's what we'll do LDAPs for most people. However, there are a couple other things. This one might be useful if you've got a firewall or something that doesn't talk like other devices and needs uh, some other uh, uh, way to communicate. So that might be something. I'm going to click on these others for you so you can read them. But uh, all we're going to use is the certificate authority and that will work just fine. And we'll show it to you and we'll prove it. So let's click next. And you can click restart if you want, but it won't make any difference because it doesn't need to restart. This is going to take a minute, so we're going to speed it up. There we go. Close. Now go back to the top here. We need to configure it now that it's installed. This is pretty much click next setup. So let's click next. Uh, this we do want to select certificate authority. If we had had anything else that we wanted to configure, we would have had to have installed it and we didn't. So we can only configure the CA. And you can see all this stuff on the left side just populated. Let's click next. Yes, it's an enterprise CA, so much easier than a standalone CA. Uh, enterprise just means in this case that it's tied into Active Directory, which is so much easier to work with. It's a root CA, yes, there's nothing above it. That's gonna ask for the private key. Well, it's gonna create one and yet we're just going to have it create one by itself. Now, this is asking for the key length and what type of algorithm do you wanna use? Uh, server 2022 and server 2019 default to SHA-256, that's where you want to be. And a, a, a 2048 uh, a bit uh, key length is correct. Uh, if you're running, I think it's server 2012 or 2012 R2 and older, defaults to SHA-1. SHA-1 is 
uh, defunct, uh, don't use it. So just move it to SHA-256, that's the norm these days. Click Next. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm going to leave it uh, like that because that name makes lots of sense to me. And how long do you want the certificate? Now, this is not this. This is not asking how long should you it, should this server issue certificates. It's not what it's asking. What it's asking for is how long should this server issue a certificate to itself. And I don't want to deal with this thing in five years, so I'm going to put it to 25. I've seen people set it to 99 before. And where do you want the database to go? Yeah, that defaults are fine for me. Doesn't make any difference where you put them. Click configure. And configured, hee haw. Click close. Now let's go to tools and certificate authority. And when we go into here, we can see issued certificates. There are none, boo. And so if we try to communicate even with ourselves, it's going to fail. So let's test this. So we'll go to LDP, which is just a little program, LDP.exe. Sometimes this just doesn't launch, by the way, so you might have to do it in a command prompt, which is a bit annoying. Uh, LDP. There we go. Anyway, I've seen that on server 2019. Uh, don't know why. It just happens. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference. So what we do is we click connection. We go to connect. And this comes up and we have to ask, it's asking what server we want to go to. Well, we want to go to ourselves. So let's pop that in, which in my case is this DCA test server 2019. And this, the, for the first communication, we're not going to do it encrypted. And this is going to work fine. There it is, right? Just came up, everything looks happy. Now take a look at this. I'm going to go to disconnect and I will go to new just to clear it out. And I'll go to connect. And this time I'll go to 636 is the port that uh, LDAPS communicates on. And we want to do it over, we specifically want to do it on SSL. And this is going to fail. Why is it failing? Well, because it doesn't have a certificate. So how do you get a certificate? Well, you can request one or you can just reboot. We're just going to reboot to make this easy. All right. We could go straight to uh, LDP to run the test, but I'm going to show you that the certificate is now installed. We'll do that very quickly so we don't take up too much of your time. And into personal. Come on, personal. There it is. Bingo. And now if we go into the certificate authority, we can see that these certificates have been issued. Look at that. Yay. Now uh, I can go into LDAP again. Oop. Now we can go to LDAP again, or LDP, I should say. Connection, connect. And this time we are going to do it on the encrypted 636 with SSL, and it's going to work. Well, what about the other server? This one over here, server 2022. It doesn't have a certificate. Right, so we have to restart it too. All right, so this is the other domain controller and it should have picked up a certificate. Everything's working properly. account there it is and now if I go to LDP and I run it these two domain controllers should now talk so I can go to connect and I can go to port 636 with SSL and I can even I can talk to uh, itself there it is. Or I can talk to the other one. Disconnect. New. Connect. There we go. That's the other one. There's your encrypted traffic, boys and girls. Kind of cool, huh? Okay, let's show you a couple of advanced things while we're here. And um, let's also show you what 
uh, happens on a workstation and a member server. So the member server, actually, let's restart. The member server and the PC and see if they get certificates. And while we're waiting, let's go to the certificate authority, the CA, and let's show you a couple of advanced things. So we'll go to tools, certificate authority, and we can also change the certificate template. So one of the things you'll notice is that this template is a domain controller template and it defaults to a one year, well, you can right click on uh, certificates and you can select our template certificate templates and you can select manage. You can click on the certificate template, you can then double click on it and see some of the settings. But you can't modify it. So what you can do though is you can build your own. You can right click and go into manage and you can create your own templates. Okay and here we are in the uh, templates and we could take domain controller, we can right click on it, duplicate it, and we can change things like, well, we can call this whatever we want. So let's call this uh, two-year domain controller cert. And we can set this to, get that, two years. And uh, this will automatically renew because we have it set to, to publish an automatic in Active Directory. It will automatically renew six weeks before uh, it expires. And let's change that to five weeks just to be different. Click OK. There it is. Now this one we can modify and we can make it supersede other templates like that domain controller one. Kind of neat. Okay, now let's, uh, uh, the other server should, the other machine should have rebooted by now. So let's minimize this, let's get rid of it and go back to the certificate authority and let's see if it issued any certificates and it did not. So we could go into that member server and we could go into the Windows 11 machine, but because they are not requiring to generate secure LDAP requests. They don't need certificates, so they don't get them. The last thing we'll show you is the properties. If you right-click on your uh, CA, on the name of it on the server here, you'll see this little green check mark, and that means everything looks happy. But you can go into the properties, and, well, you could probably screw it up pretty good. <laughs> uh, but at least you get an idea of what's here. And that's it. Hey, if you found this useful, please give us a like and a comment. Comments are great. If we don't get back to you, somebody else will. Subscribe's also really appreciated. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye bye.